Today, I'm going to be showing you one of the most powerful new tools inside of the colors page since the release of Resolve 17. Today's video is all about the color warper. So the clip that I'm using today is a GoPro shot of some sailing, and I chose to use this one because I figure GoPro footage is probably going to be something that is pretty accessible to everybody and is going to be of like a lesser grade ability than a lot of even DSLR footage. If I can do it on this, chances are really good you can do it on your footage too. First thing we're going to do is navigate on over to our color warper and that is going to be right here in this little hexagonal web looking icon. So we'll click on that and then we see that we have that same hexagon, but this time it's all colorful. Now, all of these colors represent the colors that are in your image. So we've got oranges here, we've got oranges here, we've got black colors there, we've got blues and greens out in the water. And then if we go a little bit further, we've got some browns in here, some almost purpley browns, some lighter tannish colors. We have all sorts of colors in this clip. You may have already noticed what's happening. If we take our cursor and and mouse over anywhere on this clip while the color warper is open we get this eyedropper and if we look down in the color warper you can see that as i move my eyedropper around it's changing the little red crosshair down there as well as the yellow box and what those show us are the closest adjustable point to that color and the true color of that pixel. So if I put it over the string here, you'll see that that's almost perfectly on that adjustable point. So if we take that point and adjust it, we'll be able to change the color of that string. Now, it's also gonna change all of the things around it because as you can see, it is attached to all of the other dots. So if we take this one that it was closest to and just move it on over toward the purple side, you'll see that it does in fact turn purple, but so did my arm. If you need more detail on this, say you can't get close enough to what you're after, you're gonna come down to this bottom left corner where you see we have this little color wheel with the hexagon called the hue resolution. That's how close you can get to each individual hue. And if we do that, you'll see that we get a bunch more arms. So you can go 6, 8, 12, 16, or 24. 24 is a ton, and 6 is just like one basic one for each color. So if we grab 24 of these, and then we take the saturation resolution, if you can guess what that does, then you're a little bit ahead of the curve here. It's gonna add more dots to each of the spokes of this wheel. So we'll change that from six to 16, and then you see that we just have an unbelievable amount of detail here. Just about everywhere we put this cursor, we're gonna be very close to, if not on, one of these adjustable points. So say we want to adjust the blue in the water here. We'll click that it will change the color of our little thing here so we don't lose it on our way down we can drag that closer to the center to desaturate that color a little bit we can saturate that color a bit by bringing it more toward the true color out here or we can change the hue if we want that green to be more of a bluish we can drag that over to blue and you can see we can kind of destroy it a little bit if we drag it too far but if you just drag it a bit you can take a lot of the greens out of that water and make it look more blue, which is pretty sweet. In order to reset one of these adjustable points, all you have to do is right click them and they'll snap right back to their original position. So if I grab that one and move it way over there and then I accidentally grab this one and move it over here, all I have to do to reset that whole line is right click both of the ones that are out of place and that whole line is back. So you can also draw a selection. So if you know you want a bunch of them and maybe they're not all in the same line or maybe you can't select over them effectively because of the shape that they're in, you grab this draw tool and then you can draw all of the colors that you want to adjust and then you can adjust them by clicking on them and pulling them. So we can take all of them to the cyan area down there and then you'll see that a lot of the image turns cyan because a lot of those colors that we just grabbed are now cyan but we'll put those back where they go with a simple uh undo a couple of those next up we've got the pin slash d pin tool and what we're going to do with this tool is actually really cool so if you remember earlier when we had that issue where we dragged one point over and it completely obliterated a lot of the image because a lot of the other points moved with it pinning points makes it so that that point can't move anymore so with all of these pinned if we move this one right oop, if we move this one right here we can put that wherever we want to put that 
and it won't mess with a bunch of other colors, just that one. So that is a handy tool if you're trying to be precise, especially when you really up that grid resolution, pinning stuff is very nice. So this pin depin tool really will probably save you a lot of time if you don't want to make a bunch of masks or you don't want to manually put each one back, which can be a lot of time spent. Next up, we've got the pull in so we can like scrunch the points. So if we click a bunch of times, we will suck all of the points in our area into the middle here, making like a little color black hole. That actually kind of looks pretty cool right now. I like that. And then the opposite of pull points, we have push points. So if you want to expel everything from a certain area, you just click a bunch and you can spread things out just like that. We also have this increase fall off slash smooth selection tool. So when we click on one of these and then we use this, it's going to select more points around that area so that as we move something, it's not so apparent that you only move the one thing. So we'll click on that a few times and you see that it softens that selection. So instead of only selecting that one and moving that one around, we'll go ahead and soften that selection and then we can move a whole chunk of things around as a group. And then the exact opposite of that, we've got decrease fall off. If you have too big of a selection here, you can just reduce that selection. Pretty easy. So this one actually will turn your selected point into a pin. So if you select every point here and then go ahead and pin all of them at the same time, you can move individual points around and nothing else will move if you want to lock everything down and only move specific things. Next up, we have select column. So we'll click on one of these. And then if we click on select column, it will select everything in that color. So we can take all of the purplish magentas in this case and just move them around. So we can make them more blue, make them more red. We can make them green if we want to. If you need to select a whole ring, just pick one of them, go ahead and select that ring. And then you can move that saturation range around if you want to. That actually looks pretty fun. It's like a little tube. It's like 3D now. And then we have a select all button right here. Boom, so that you can select everything. And then if you've done too much with your pins and your selections and everything, and you're like, okay, too many things are pinned and I can't find all of them, or I don't want to go through and individually click them with my pin tool, you can just click on this and everything will be back to normal. You can also select color ranges with this tool. So you can grab your purples and go all the way into your greens, and then you'll be leaving your teals and your blues alone, but you can grab all of these at the same time by using that range selector and then say like, you could saturate them, you could desaturate them, you can push them all to one color. The possibilities with this are just awesome. And with your selected ranges, so we'll go ahead and get the yellows to reds right here. So hopefully this arm is selected, these sheets are selected, and then we can go ahead and grab our hue down here and we can actually pivot that in another direction. And then we can actually do our saturation too. We can saturate all those colors in that selection. We can desaturate them. We can bring them down to zero. So we only have what's not in the selection, which is fun. You can feather your selection. Uh, you can change the brightness of that selection. So if you say, hey, I want to have really, really bright yellows in this image, you can go ahead and just select your yellows like that. And then with them selected, go ahead and drag that Luma slider all the way up and everything that is in that selection range, is going to be bright. And if that's not precise enough, again, just pop down here, increase that resolution, select that yellow again. See, even right now we have so much more and then we can bring up the brightness of those colors or down as well as the saturation and the hue. And if you really like to have this bigger or if you're having some trouble seeing it, you can go ahead and click on this right here and it will actually pop it out of that window and you can move it around like this. So we also have this chroma luma side. So you get the same controls on this page that you get on the page with the hexagon or whatever this is, but they're more for like the luminance levels between different color groups. So green and magenta are opposite colors and blue and yellow are opposite colors. So if you need to do any balancing inside of your footage, this is a great way to do that. We'll get all of this reset. We'll close our popped out window. It'll pop right back down here. I would love to know what the first thing you're going to color grade with this is. So please let me know in the comments down below and definitely don't forget to subscribe because like I said, tomorrow we're going to talk about the magic masks and this tool the magic mask tool is super cool as well it's definitely not one you want to miss so i will see you tomorrow with that